liked on this video then you also absolutely love youtube as a platform and you want to start creating content or maybe you've already started but you just want tips and tricks on how to maybe grow your channel and i want to share with you absolutely everything i've learned over the eight years of me doing YouTube. The ups and the downs and just absolutely everything you need to do. This is the complete guide of everything you need to do in order to start a successful YouTube channel in 2022. So get comfortable, grab a snack, grab a beverage, and get a pen and paper out because I am gonna be hitting you with all the knowledge of everything I've learned over the eight years of me doing YouTube. Your YouTube journey starts right now. So before we talk about equipment and you go and rush out and buy your first camera, we need to talk about what it's really like to be a content creator, if this is something that is really for you and why you want to do this. I feel like there's a huge common misconception about just what a week in the life of a YouTuber is really like. You know, you just assume if you're posting one video a week, then that's maybe like an hour of filming, a couple hours of editing, and you upload it and you're done. But that's not really how things go. I feel like there's two main sides to YouTube. So there's the content creation side, obviously the side that you guys get to see, the full video, and then there's the business side. So the content creation side includes planning your videos, doing your research about what videos to even film and make, to filming those videos. This is probably the thing that takes the least amount of time to be honest. And then there's editing and uploading. All of those combined, I feel like maybe take me 20 to 30 hours a week it's it's really intense it's a lot and then there's the business side to it which includes emailing brands with brand deals just optimizing your channel doing all of the keyword research and everything updating all your playlists and bios and description boxes and things like that as well as even building your presence on other social media platforms so that you can bring in another audience from different platforms. It's not just a walk in a park, you don't just sit down and film and edit for a few hours and then for the rest of the week you can just lounge around and just watch Netflix and it, it, it's not like that. I wish it was, it's not. <laughs> so if you're prepared to do all that work, pretty much prepared for it to be a whole full-time job on the side of whatever it is you do, then we need to find out your why. I feel like because there's so much work that goes into it, Knowing your why is what's really going to help you keep going and just stay with it because YouTube is such a long game. Knowing my why is what has gotten me through eight years of doing YouTube and me pretty much not making any money off of it. I just continue to show up every single week and post videos every single week because I genuinely love it. I love the craft of it. I love filming and editing and sharing my life. So we have to figure out your why. Do you genuinely also love the craft of just filming and editing? Do you have something you're passionate about that you want to share with others? Do you want to help people maybe in a certain field and share your experiences? Finding out your why is what's going to help you be persistent through the tough times of being a content creator. And trust me, there are a lot of tough times. YouTube is such a long game. Trust me, I've been in it for eight years and it does. you just need to be so persistent and dedicated and just keep on going if you're not willing to do that then maybe this isn't for you i also feel like in figuring out your why you'll also figure out what kind of content you're wanting to create i'm not talking about niches here i don't really believe in niches i believe in finding your target audience your why and making content based on those two things. So figuring out who your target audience is. For me, it is girls my age, women in their 20s who are trying to just figure out their life and find happiness in the little things no matter what they're doing, whether they're working full time or they're self-employed, working from home. Girls who, yeah, are trying to chase their dreams and live the dream life that they wanna live. So that's my target audience. My why is wanting to be relatable content for them, wanting to be a comfort for them whilst also trying to be productive and inspiring for them maybe someone is trying to quit their job to be a full-time content creator just like me and so i hope my content can help to inspire them and really help them through that tough life decision but also my aim is to make content that i wish that i had when i was growing up also to find representation in because when i was a young girl there were barely any chinese girls making it big on youtube and i would have just loved to see yeah just a lot more girls on the platform that look like me and are living the life that i live 
So that is my why, that is my target audience. So all of my content that I make is targeted towards them and I just always have them in mind when I make my content. So figuring out that for you is really gonna help you figure out, first of all, why you're actually doing this and help get you through and stay persistent, but also help you figure out what kind of videos you're actually gonna be making for people. So now that we've talked about your why, we can get into equipment. I feel like this is the fun part. Here is my full list of all the equipment, all the tools that I use that go into my content creation. So first of all, you will need something to film with, obviously. This can mean a bunch of different things. I actually use multiple different devices, I guess. So for the longest time, I was using my iPhone 11 to film a lot of my content. Now I have a new phone, my Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3. So I use that also sometimes to film content too. The camera I'm filming on right now, and pretty much the main one that I use for most of my videos is my Canon G7X. This is just my favorite camera. I feel like the audio is really nice. The quality is really nice. Also just so compact and easy to travel with and set up on any tripod, not bulky at all, it's just one of my favorite devices to use. I also have the Canon M50 camera. I barely ever use it, so I feel like I should use it more. I don't know why. It is still amazing quality and has great audio as well, but I don't know, the Canon G7X is just so much easier to just whip out and just like start filming, you know what I mean? So yeah, you definitely do not need two cameras like I do. Next up I mentioned is a tripod. My one is literally just from Amazon. Amazon is just a great place to buy any of your tech needs or your equipment. But I also went the longest time without a tripod. Like I literally bought a tripod last year and I've been doing this for so long. Most of the time I will literally use my water bottle. Like I'll literally just stand my water bottle on a table and put my camera on top. I do that all the time. You could use books, you could use a table, literally anything. Just something to put your camera on so that you don't always have to like hold it and then it's like shaky footage. I feel like nice still footage like this is just the best to kind of watch unless you're vlogging, obviously. The third essential for me is my laptop. <laughs> I couldn't do anything without my laptop, obviously. The laptop is my third essential. I currently have the MacBook Pro 2021 version. Obviously, do your research on what laptop or computer or whatever you want to use to edit suits you best, but I recommend something that can obviously handle your software that you're going to use for editing. So yeah, you'll need a laptop or something to edit on, and then you also need the software that you're going to use to edit on. I use Final Cut Pro. It is my absolute favorite video editing software ever. I've been using it for almost a year now so so good and it's really helped me just up my editing game if you watch videos from about a year ago versus videos that i edit now you will see a huge difference i've started to do more text more graphics color grading all of this kind of stuff now that i've got final cut pro but for the longest time literally up until last year i was using imovie it's just free comes free on your apple laptop um, and it works fine. I feel like if I'd had more knowledge, I could have made it work with the kind of graphics and the text that I use now, but I feel like Final Cut Pro is just, it just allows you to do a lot more and the color grading on iMovie was just horrible, so I just never did it. But it's a great software to use when you're first starting. I literally just saved up so much of my Google like ad revenue and then bought Final Cut Pro with it. So I just like reinvested into my business. But before that, before you even get monetized or anything like that, don't put so much money into getting your equipment and your software and everything. Honestly, just invest slowly because this is such a slow, long process. You don't want to just spend thousands and thousands of dollars on all this equipment and then it just doesn't really go anywhere. We just slowly invest as your channel gets monetized and gets picked up, things like that. There's tons of free video editing softwares out there. DaVinci is really good as well. I used that for a little bit before I got Final Cut Pro. Um, but yeah, I bit the bullet. A few months ago, I bought Final Cut Pro and I've never looked back. I put lighting on here. Honestly, I just used natural lighting. Like, I've got two beautiful big windows right in front of me. Um, and I just film during the day. I pretty much never really film at night. Love the look of natural lighting. I literally will never film with artificial lighting. I've done it before. I hate how the footage looks. I don't know. I just feel like natural lighting is so much better. But obviously, you can look at different lighting options if you pretty much can only film at night or for whatever reason. There are so many different options on Amazon that you can get. Ring lights are really great. Soft boxes are great. But just, I personally, I just use the sun. <laughs> And then a lot of little miscellaneous bits is obviously a memory card. You need to have a memory card to be able to put into your camera so that the footage can be on the memory card. I have multiple memory cards. 
I, yeah, that's it, memory cards, <laughs> get some. Make sure camera batteries are always good. I have two camera batteries for both of my cameras and I always have one on charge. Like I'm using one in my camera right now and then I'm also having one on charge right now. And then one thing I swear by, I love is my hard drive. I have a four terabyte hard drive and I just store absolutely all of my footage, everything goes on the hard drive. I literally don't put any of it on my laptop at all. And I have a bunch of footage for B-roll on there. All of my YouTube music, my sounds, my graphics is all on this hard drive. My laptop just runs so much smoother than when I would put all of my footage straight onto my laptop. So I am a marketing major. I have a degree in marketing and I'm also a social media manager. And so I have to talk about branding. <laughs> I feel like a lot of these videos that I've watched don't really have to talk about your branding and just things like that. So I'm talking about your channel banner, your highlights on Instagram, your little intro if you're gonna have one, your end card if you have one. It's really great to just have something where people would recognize you by, even obviously without your face in it, like you just want to have something that people will recognize you by. I love having everything the same. All of my profile pictures on all of my social medias are the exact same so that if someone wants to see my my YouTube profile picture on TikTok, they can be like, oh, I recognize her and just hopefully follow. For all of this, I literally just use Canva. Canva is my life. I love it so much. I also use Canva for all of my thumbnails. Branding to me is super important. I think just find a couple of colors that you really like that you can have just throughout all of your just everything, just your thumbnails even, it, even if it's just like the color of the text is the same throughout everything. I just think personal branding now is just so important, especially if you're gonna be a lifestyle kind of channel like me, it's just so important to have personal branding. Now we can talk about my favorite part, which is video editing. I have grown the biggest passion for video editing ever since I got Final Cut Pro and ever since I've started just really experimenting and just having a lot of fun with it. I've now started drawing little graphics. I use Procreate on my iPad for that. Literally, if you watch one of my videos like a year ago, I'm so embarrassed by this. I literally watched one of them the other day and just cringed because there was just absolutely nothing. There was nothing to it. I literally just like did a rough cut of the video, which is just like cutting through, just like taking out all the like weird bits of the video. That's it. I put on my end card and I uploaded it and that was it. And I was just like, why? No wonder people didn't really want to watch me <laughs> like a year ago my views weren't as good because my video was so boring There was no other elements to it now with my videos I do like a little intro bit like a little 14 15 seconds like of like previews of what you're gonna be seeing in the video um, And then I go into the video from there whereas before I would just like go straight into the video And it was just like I don't know to me I just didn't really like that now there's a lot more different elements to make it look more interesting and just catch people's attention a lot more, make people stay interested in my video because we're all part of the TikTok generation, okay? We all have like seven second attention span. Trying to get people like this, which is also me, to watch a 20 minute YouTube video, you really need to be doing a lot in the YouTube video to keep people staying with you. Whether that's through little graphics or like a little sound effect. You'll see throughout this video when I've brought up a new point, I've done like a little title card with a little mouse click that's to keep you interested whereas if i just did this whole thing where i was just talking and there was no little text or sound effects or anything like that you would be bored out of your mind it, i think it's just so important to add little things like that and you'll through editing more and more videos you will find your editing style like it took me a little bit to find my editing style but now i'm so happy with it if you're really stuck with editing maybe computers are just really not your thing i also do edit for youtubers so if this is something you are really interested in investing in you can come chat with me and we can discuss how I can help you and how I can edit for you. So yeah, if you want to help with your video editing, then definitely leave me a comment or send me a message on Instagram. I'm always happy to help. I freaking love YouTube editing, so. The last thing I wanna to touch on with editing is music. Music is so important. I have a full folder with so many music options and there are a number of different places I get this from. A big one is just straight from YouTube, just typing in like copyright free music and there's so many different options there. My favorite artist, which you will know if you watch any of my videos, is Luke Luke Rembo. I think that's how you say his name. He has the best just lo-fi chill beats. So good, that's kind of my vibe. The two different music softwares I like to use are Thematic and Epidemic Sound. Both of them do have free trials, I think, but then they also have paid plans as well that just allows you to have more access to music, but those are really great ways to have 
copyright free music or the rights to music that you can use in your YouTube videos. So, and the last category I want to talk about is filming actually filming your content strategy your planning process and the filming process these are things i definitely didn't even implement till like a year ago i'd say because before that i feel like i would just kind of pick up the camera when i felt like making a video and i would just just film whatever we're talking about filming and your content strategy and actually planning your videos so we can tie this back to what i was talking about in the beginning of the video which is knowing your why and knowing your target audience like i said i don't really believe in niches anymore i feel like people want to see multiple different things from you for example i love to show you my work week in my life and what i do for work as a self-employed person but I also sometimes love to show you my crochet projects and what I'm making as a new crochet addict <laughs> sometimes it's just showing you random days in my life living in Perth, Australia I think having like three main I guess content pillars, content types that you're gonna make really helps if I think for me my three are showing my work and what I do as a content creator showing my crochet projects and then showing my life in Perth. Format I will usually do for them is vlogging. I do a lot of vlogs or sit down videos like this now. So with those three things in mind, I kind of just always know what kind of content to film. I try and make them super even as well so the people who are only interested in my crochet videos still get a good amount of crochet videos for me as well as people who only like my work vlogs they will also get a good amount of work vlogs i'll also plan it so that there's like a point to, to the vlog if that makes sense so it's not even just like a oh it's just a work week in my life or it's just i'm showing you just a day in my life it's, it's more so like i'm showing you what i do typically in a day as a social media manager or as someone that works for themselves like it's more to the point it has more of like it just gives it more of a purpose rather than just being like, this is just a week in my life, if that makes sense. Having a purpose and having value in your videos is so important and just knowing the purpose of why you're filming that video, who you're targeting with that video, who you think this video can help, things like that is gonna be so useful to you. And also, once you decide what you're filming, it's so important to be able to plan out where you're filming, how you're filming, and also B-roll. B-roll to me is so, it's, it's such a new thing as well that I've been doing. I haven't really done B-roll all that much, which again, I think is why my videos, well, I think my videos were so boring like a year ago. It wasn't entertaining, which is what the whole purpose of YouTube is, is to either entertain or educate or inspire. It's such an important tool to help captivate people to your videos and it just is so, to me, I just find it so impressive when people have B-roll because I feel like they've planned, at least if they're anything like me, they've planned out those shots. I always plan out my B-roll if I know that I'm going to be filming a video like this I have like literally I have my b-roll clips planned it's like I'm gonna pl I plan to show you footage of my equipment when I'm to overlay over the footage of me talking about my equipment I just I don't want that part to just be just me talking about my equipment and I don't even show you it definitely plan out b-roll and the more you do it the more natural it just becomes to you and that is my ultimate beginner's guide on how you can start a successful YouTube channel in 2022. That was absolutely all of the knowledge I could possibly give you right now. Just everything that I wish I would have known when I first started YouTube. Because I feel like all of the YouTube guides or like guide to how to start a YouTube channel videos like back then were literally just like, you just get a camera and you just edit and you just be yourself. And I'm like, great, that doesn't help me at all. I really hope this was helpful to you. I hope I was able to give you some really good tips and tricks. And yeah, I hope you're feeling confident and feeling motivated and excited to start your YouTube journey. If you guys are starting a YouTube channel, then please leave your YouTube name in the comments. And if you already have a YouTube channel as well, be sure to leave your name in the YouTube comments too. We can all support each other and follow each other. It is such an amazing community that you can build here on YouTube. And yeah, we should just all support each other. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Thank you guys so much for watching to the end of this video and sticking with me. Subscribe to my channel as well if you guys are new here and you guys are interested in watching more content from me. I also have an Instagram and a TikTok as I mentioned throughout this video so be sure to follow me on those platforms too. Thank you again so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!